Cool. We are recording. Welcome, folks, to the latest installment of the Coaches Connect call. Uh, we have a excellent array of coaches here for us today. And Coach Anna, who is, I believe, enrolling in L2 recently, uh, you had some feedback on the enrollment process and some questions on how to best proceed there. Do you want to give us a little preview of the of the topic you just shared? Sure. Thank you, Jeremy. I was reading through the questions and I, I loved the process. I loved seeing those questions and getting me really thinking about how am I going to set aside more time? What are the challenges I foresee or um, imagine could become possible and how can I help the coaches who are in the program uh, like you? How can they? How can I set myself up for success and uh, success in the partnership as well? So should I be brief or should I be really <clears throat> forthcoming or somewhere in the middle? <laughs> yeah. So uh, I will represent both ends of the spectrum here. Uh, although I am not a coach or I'm not currently helping with the L2 cohort, uh, intake forms are things that every coach will be familiar with. So some clients you may get uh, a yes, no response and others may be a lot more verbose. I, as a coach, tend to fall on alignment more so with, hey, share all the things that are relevant to you so I can get to know you as much as possible. In L2, the coaching team is very experienced and very seasoned, and they will make the effort to try and connect with you personally. The more information you provide to them, just like a new client working with you, the more in, uh, information provided, the better the experience will likely be. They will have more information to work off of. They'll be able to meet you where you are a little bit more easily. Uh, second to that, it's also quite beneficial for coaches signing up for any new coaching endeavor where you are receiving coaching to just kind of put all your cards on the table and use that as a space for you to collect some of your thoughts and ideas about what do I want from this experience. Uh, I've found that even myself as a coach, when receiving coaching from others, I come in with what I think is a quite clear understanding of what I want. And then as the experience progresses, that thing can also evolve and change because quite often there are things on offer that I am unaware of. I didn't know that that was a thing that I could want. So putting it all down on paper right now would be really useful for you for letting your kind of your ideas wander a little bit understand, oh, maybe there are some other things that I can pursue and achieve here. And then when you compare that later on, later down the course, how does your mindset evolve? How have those things that you previously set out for, are they still the same? Are you closer to them? Are there new things on the horizon for you? It's all really useful information. So I wouldn't say you need to feel constrained by a certain word count or anything like that, uh, unless specifically asked for in that coaching experience. So if it says, keep it to 200 words, that might be some guidance, but if not, run wild. And also Coach Tony and Coach Jay and Coach Dom, if you're seeing this uh, and Anna writes you an entire novel, I am so sorry, but it is in her best interest and I know they'll do right by you. I'll try to keep it a little less than a novel. <laughs> Thank I'm you. sure they'd appreciate it, but again, it is your journey. Do what you need to. Uh, this is probably a good conversation for coaches who are also doing intakes as well. What are your preferences from a client? Or if you've sat in the client seat before, uh, are there any concerns that you have? Maybe this is a conversation that can help some folks improve their intake process by putting a little bit of thought into uh, both sides of the equation. We often think about what do I need as a coach? Maybe asking the question, what does my client need to feel fully engaged or like they're being heard here? So I shared some thoughts on what I prefer for a client. Definitely word dump, get all the things out. The more information I have available, the more, uh, the easier I find it to form that initial connection. There may be a little throwaway detail that you share there that tends to relate to maybe some of my experience or some of my coaching experience. And they give us, us another uh, point to bond over. Coaches, what are your thoughts here? What do you got, Leah? 
So, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, definitely what you were saying is, you know, trying to find out what's important to them. And then another thing that I really like to do um, is I just use that intake form as kind of like a guide, I guess, like where I'm just kind of looking over it. If there's things that I forget, I don't you I don't do it step by step anymore um, because most of the time I'm like, I just get to the nitty gritty of like what the client is looking for. Um, and then just going in depth in that, um, I just had another new client yesterday and it was just so nice and refreshing to not go through that intake form after my first few clients, um, because we were able to have a conversation and I'm not just sitting there looking at a paper, writing everything down. Um, and then what I'll do is like throughout, throughout our journey together, I'm pulling things from the intake form to ask questions and follow up questions. Um, it has just been making it so much easier for me because I, I'm such a, this is the task, this is what needs to be done person. Um, so when I have that triage form, I'm like, I need to fill out the triage form. Um, and it just, it made it more, not, I shouldn't say like awkward, but it's like, I'm sitting there and I'm able to actually engage more with the client. Um, so I found that really helpful and it was really refreshing yesterday to have that opportunity to have my client tell me more in detail about themselves, be able to share more. Um, another key point that I do too is um, really like letting them know too, communication is key. So they also have to be able to tell me things. They don't have to be specific like in details if they don't want to, but you know, if, if they're not tracking, I need to know why. They can mm -hmm. just say, you know, I'm having a really tough time in this. And then we work on that whole health part. Um, but that's another key thing to talk about clients for with that intake form. Awesome. Yeah. I mean, uh, I think something that I'll take away from your response there is that the information that a coach highlights versus the information that I as a potential client may highlight, there may be certain things that I think are just like kind of like throwaway bits, but the coach is seeing that through different eyes and experiences that like, oh, that is a sign that I should ask certain questions or I should prompt certain additional actions because my coaching experience has told me to do so. Uh, and a client may see them like, oh yeah, it's just another, uh, just another box for me to check or another form for me to fill out. Nothing too detailed there. So another reason to, uh, to gather more information. I'm curious to know if there's anyone who, who takes kind of the opposite stance and is like, yeah, I can see uh, a time and place where brevity might be useful in the intake uh, form experience or in the client intake experience in general. Christina, what do you got? Hello, Jeremy. Um, I would just share, like, I had a couple uh, experiences when I planned to run a client through the triage, like PN triage questionnaire, right? And I have everything in place. I put out and the client burst at me with all the issues and problems and like during the initial call and you kind of deviate a little bit from the actual questionnaire. You get a general idea what they're looking for and sometimes it could be just listening. <laughs> And I was able to bond with that client and get the rest of the information and kind of get back on, on what I wanted to learn from the client, like during the, the following call. But that initial bonding has helped me to actually like sign them up, if that makes sense. So I did have those exceptions. I do agree that like gathering information and following through them bullet points is very important because it helps as a coach to know uh, a client as a like from a big picture perspective. But sometimes it could be just the listening part, and that's what they needed at that moment. You, you know, you help them to bond. I mean, to be listened, and then that's created some sort of bond that helped to develop a longer term relationship moving forward. Awesome, yeah. Awesome. And I mean, it always reminds me of uh, feedback that I got from uh, Coach John in one of these calls, where he mentioned in a his line here is in a twenty nine minute call, if or sorry, in a 30 minute call, if you spend 29 minutes just going through the client sharing with you, and then one minute focused on kind of the framework that you had 
pre-planned for, that was a very valuable call. And it's certainly at the onset of new coaching relationships, that tends to outweigh any specific single piece of information that we can gather. I agree. Having an, yeah, having an environment where your client feels seen and feels understood and like you're providing a space for them to work on themselves, incredibly valuable. So it sounds like that mirrors your experience quite well. Uh, to give kind of like a counterpoint in terms of when might brevity in the intake process serve you well, this is likely to happen for coaches who are engaging in group coaching and you are going through dozens of intake forms, if not hundreds of intake forms. That is a time where you may want to get your clients to uh, to focus their, their kind of thought process a little bit more. And a question that you can use to to help with that focus would be something along the lines of, tell me about your top three priorities. Because this is also incredibly valuable if like if a client has uh, 10 priorities, like I want to get fit, I want to improve my 5K, I also want to improve my deadlift, and I also want to have 30 inch arms. Like if they have too many conflicting ideas, it may not be uh, super valuable to kind of like list all of those things. Having them sit down and take some time to ask, hey, what do I really want from this? What are my highest priorities? Is likely a valuable experience, more so for the client than for the coach initially. Uh, but it can also then help you to focus your approach for what are the things that we need to address earlier on in our process? And then what are the things that come down a little bit later on that list? And we can, we can work with those things uh, on a different time scale. They're not super important right off the bat. Uh, Anna, I'm going to kick it back to you. This was your conversation. Uh, does that feedback help? It does. And I, I've thought about my experiences when I'm intaking. And sometimes people really do just need to spill a whole bunch of things before you can get to um, how can I help? Because they want you to know the breadth of what they're managing. So that, and then, and that, that helps me too. It helps me know what their mindset is. It helps me know um, what their pain level is. And just the way that they're conveying the information can be really um, give me some insights into how they're kind awesome. of operating. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it also gives us one final thought on this. It gives us, this is a competitive advantage that coaches have uh, when compared to other professionals. Uh, if you think of people in like a more medical setting where it's often fee for service, I see 15 to 30 people in a given day. I don't have time to allow a client to kind of explore their thoughts and share in kind of long format responses. Uh, if you're sitting down specifically one-on-one -on -one with a person or in a small group, allowing that one person who is currently in front of you to share a little bit more and give them that contrast of, if I was in a different professional's office, I might have 30 seconds to explain what's going on before they then take the mic back uh, monologue at me for a while, ask me, do you have any questions, hoping that I don't have any questions and then send me on my way. Yeah. So really, really valuable, uh, items to kind of ask ourselves both as coaches and explore when we're on the client side as well to improve both what we want to see from a coaching experience as a client. And we want our clients to experience when working with us. Thank you, Anna. Thank you. Uh, Lily, I think I still see that you're here. Uh, you had a question as well. I, yeah, thanks. Um, my question is a bit more practical. It was about, um, I mean, not that that's not practical, but anyway, um, I had some questions about the pro coach application. Is it okay mm -hmm. to ask them here? Is uh, yes, it is okay. I have one question before you do. Do you need to see any demos? Cause I'll have to pull those up. So let me know if that is required and I will get that set up while you are prefacing your question. Um, maybe is the answer. <laughs> cool. Maybe. Um, um, so some of them are like kind of easy, like is the app only available for Apple? Uh, the client app is currently available. It is available for both, but it is currently only technically available for new clients who are using uh, Apple devices. 
Oh, okay. So it's not available on Android. I would not uh, advertise it to new clients who use Android devices. Okay. Um, is that going to change? The plan is it is for it to change. I do not have a timeline for it though. Okay. Um, and then, um, so two kind of more application questions from a coaching perspective is, uh, one is um, how much personalization of the, I don't know what you would call it, the landing page, like your profile page and of the <clears> sales <throat> page is permitted. Um, the profile page is quite personalized, but the sales page is, is only very, as, as far as I can see, there's only very small parts that you can edit. Um, and I wondered if I was missing something there. So about the personalization of those two pages. And then the other question was, um, is there anywhere within your client's um, profile or you know within your client's record that you can write notes um, on your client? Um, and the only place that I'd found is in a planned check-in. So when I future plan a check-in, there is a, an option for me to write notes. Mm -hmm. So for the last check-in, so at the last check-in, basically I write the notes in the next check-in, but I wondered if there was somewhere else you could write notes on your clients um, that I've missed. Gotcha, cool. I can answer both those questions and I'm glad I got my screen share set up. Thank you. So should be good there. Oh, what did I do here? AI companion, get out of here. Okay, so we are on the Pro Coach page. This is the coaching side of the application. Uh, and you mentioned the done for you sales page. So a little feedback or a little uh, a little context for folks who maybe haven't used Pro Coach or are unfamiliar with the your Pro Coach feature, uh, as we call it internally, the done for you sales page. So this is meant to be a add-on for Pro Coach users who are newer to coaching and you don't have all of your social kind of, uh, you don't have all your social touch points available online right now. So it's like maybe you have an Instagram page, maybe not, but you need something to share with clients to start to show that, hey, I'm a professional. So enter the done for you sales page. In a few clicks, you can customize a whole bunch of it. I haven't done anything on this one because this is my demo account, but I can show you what it would look like by going to the preview. So every pro coach page comes with this. This is a free feature. And this is what it looks like in its default setting. So you can share this link. It is personalized to your pro coach name, first name, last name. And our uh, copy team created this whole thing. So super easy, looks very professional. Uh, the branding looks quite similar to what PN would have. If you're familiar with like, the quality of the images that we produce, it will look very high quality. That being said, so Lily was asking the question of, uh, can you customize it? So this, uh, this column on the left-hand side here, this nav bar, are, these are all the items that you can customize to some degree. So some of them you cannot, like I can't get rid of these images here, but I can go to the about you section. Here are all the things that you can change your areas of expertise, you can add a few uh, quick tags there, certs and education you can add in, social links, all of those things. Uh, in terms of additional customization, this page is meant to be for folks who have no idea how to write a web page or how to code a web page and are not ready to pay for it yet. So it's not truly fully customizable. Like I can't add in a payment software or a scheduling software on top of this platform. You can, by all means, take the scaffolding from here and the way that we organize it, share it with your web developer or use it as a, a template they use to develop your own website. But there's gonna be limitations in what this page can do simply because we want it to be easy to navigate for people who are not tech people, essentially people like myself. So Lily, if you're running into issues in terms of certain levels of customization, it's kind of baked into what the, the element of Pro Coach offers here. It's not supposed to be super highly customizable, 
it's meant to be mostly click drag and drop. So like I can change the background banners and stuff like that. I can change location surf by adding in a little bit of text, pricing, testimonials. It's all by selecting menus and deselecting menus. Was there anything specific that you were looking to change or add? No, that that's answered it well for me. I just wondered, I, I've done the, the uh, menu items on the left and I just wondered if you could change like, you know, the where the big bits of text were and stuff like that. And I just missed that option. It's fine that you can't. I just wondered if mm -hmm. I was missing something. Yeah, Thank you. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, and I mean, we did a rewrite of the text probably in the, within the last 12 months to make it, it was really nutrition coach specific and kind of personal trainer specific. We've tried to change the text to make it more coach and health focus specific. Uh, so hopefully that fits, but again, if it doesn't represent you and your individual business at this time in a way that you feel is authentic to you, please feel free to uh, use it as a template in future endeavors, but not share with clients at this time. Uh, and then to answer your second question. So your second question was, is there a place to store notes for clients? So there's a couple places and you found one of them. So here's a demo client here in the profile section. If you scroll down, there's a note section. So I can add client notes here. Uh, it'll give you a date, title, details to follow. If you go into the check-in process, as you've already noted, uh, click on add a new check-in and you can add check-in notes there as well. So those are the two main places where you can add notes. So one you already had, and then there's one additional there. Uh, and also for folks who are curious, none of these details are shared with clients, so they can't see these sections. Uh, and I'm just popping into the chat box. Cool. Uh, any questions regarding ProCoach or any of the things that I just uh, mentioned? I have one, please. Um, you Go know, for it, Donna. Thank you. You know, in Google Calendar, where in the description section where you're taking notes, you can add an attachment. So a lot of times I'll use a spreadsheet and I have mm -hmm. specific columns where I'm like, are they dealing with this, 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 so that it just helps me to remember. And I think it's nice. People obviously feel seen and heard better when you remember what's going on with them. Um, yep. So and you do this on Google Calendar? Well, yeah, you can just, um, you can put a picture or whatever you want, any kind of attachment in the description of the calendar event. So I'm wondering if that's oh, gotcha. yes. essentially something you could do on this profile where you could put in your own note or a screenshot of your handwritten notes or that kind of thing. Uh, I don't think there are specific images that you can attach here. Uh, as far as notes go, you can capture text-based notes only, I think. Okay. Uh, but that is a cool idea and question for you, when you do that, can your clients then see those notes? Uh, if they want to. They can see the attachments in that calendar invite, I would assume. Oh, no, no. Um, if it's, um, no, I wouldn't put it in a, in probably a calendar invite unless they wanted that, unless they wanted to see that. Um, gotcha. Okay. Cool. It's uh, more for my Sure. Yeah. It's more for my reference and tracking. Um, sometimes mm -hmm. people come in really fast and I don't get to spend that much time with them. So um, right. a lot of people let names. <laughs> gotcha. Gotcha. Cool. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to stop share from there and we can head back to the main conversation. Uh, I see there's a question here from Lisa. Uh, Lisa, are you able to unmute and give some background info? Hi, I, <laughs> excuse me. Um, I can unmute for a few minutes, but I have contractors working on my house and puppies in the background. So lots of noise. Not a problem so far. Go for it. Okay. Yeah. So my question was, I'm new to the L1 certification program. Um, I, I'm not quite familiar yet with, with everything. So can you explain pro coach, um, who is it available for? Gotcha. Can do. Uh, so ProCoach is actually available for anyone who has an email address. We don't need to be PN certified to use ProCoach. Uh, we removed that rec or that qualification maybe about two or three years ago. Uh, in that being said, who will be 
best able to use ProCoach are definitely people who have gone through one of our L1 programs because ProCoach works off of the six-stage coaching format that we share in both L1 Nutrition and L1 SSR. And if you're unfamiliar with that format, then ProCoach is going to seem quite foreign and it makes it a steeper learning curve. So if you're currently enrolled in L1, uh, I typically tell folks that I would start the 30-day free pro coach trial. If I was starting again from, from zero PN experience, I would start the 30-day free trial as I was around uh, chapter 15 of the L1 nutrition experience and probably a little bit later for the L2, or sorry, uh, for L1 SSR, just because it's a denser book. Uh, but by that time, you've done the first two units mostly, or you've completed almost the first two units at least. Uh, you have experience and exposure to the six stage kind of coaching process or six step coaching process, I should say. So it shouldn't be super unfamiliar for you. And at that point, you can start to integrate some of the things that you're learning as you continue through your certification with the people who are either your demo clients or your test clients or what have you. Okay, wonderful. I really appreciate that. And then you said yeah, no I just would sign up by emailing somebody. Uh, yeah. So you are currently enrolled in L1, correct? Yes. Right. So when you log on to your PN dashboard, which is you've gone to kind of the PN sign in page, you put in your email and your password, it will take you to your PN dashboard. If you look on the top, uh, there's a navigation bar at the top there that says Pro Coach. If you click on that, it will take you to a link that will allow you to sign up for your 30 day trial. And okay. then once you are signed up and you go through the sign up, or once you are signed up and enrolled in that 30 day trial, you will then be able to just click on the pro coach button and it will take you to your coaching desktop. Okay. Wonderful. Thank you very much. No worries. Uh, Rania, you have your hand up as well. Yes. Hi, thank you. Uh, so my questions regarding pro coach as well. I've just completed my PN level one nutrition course and I'm yet to take on clients, figuring out how to go about that. And I'm considering using pro coach for that. And I want to understand how exactly does pro coach integrate the uh, the PN format or the learnings mm -hmm. from PN what we've done? Like how is that applicable to pro coach? Uh, yeah. So one of the things I say when folks ask kind of like the broader question, like what is pro coach? What are your thoughts on it? Is that pro coach is the only uh, coaching software developed by uh, the folks who created the PN curriculum. So the PN curriculum is hard baked into the pro coach process. So the most obvious, uh, the most obvious kind of elements that are like very PN specific would be one, that it uses the six-step coaching process. So if you haven't seen that in the PN materials that you've seen so far, you will likely see it quite soon. I believe we allude to it in maybe like chapter two or three, and then it comes back as we're getting into the more practical uh, end stages of uh, unit two and potentially unit three. Uh, as well as having the six-step coaching process, it is a platform that is focused on deep health so that is a concept that you will be learning about as you go through your L1 studies. Uh, and one of those key foundations is that we are not super nutrition focused. There are many elements that, uh, that are related to health. You will learn all about them off the top of my head. I want to say that there's six, but there also may be eight. And I haven't reviewed that in a long time. So you'll see that shortly. Uh, and then also it utilizes our, from a measurement and kind of quantitative data perspective, it uses our hand portion guide as its main way of encouraging building awareness of your nutritional intake, specifically regarding portions. So those are a few things that make it like really PN centric. I'm sure there's more elements uh, that if I were to look at it a little bit more closely and not off the top of my head, can give you a better answer. But those are the things that come to mind most closely when I think PN Ethos and Pro Coach. Actually, one more that comes to mind right away, but is not highly enforced in Pro Coach, is uh, typically in PN and specifically PN coaching. We encourage clients to work on one thing at a time. Uh, Pro Coach, you can have up to, I believe, eight habits on the go at the same time. 
but we strongly encourage coaches to help clients work on actively one habit at a time, and then maybe they can track other habits passively uh, as they're working on developing one kind of core competency. Hopefully that answers your question. Uh, any other questions? So uh, I also mentioned earlier in this call that I often come here with one or two topics. Oh, I get to put them back in my pocket. Lily, what do you got? Sorry, I was slow to find the button. Um, no worries. If, if, there, if there wasn't um, another topic that, that came from, from the um, coaches, I was just wondering if people would be willing to share how they got their first um, five clients so i'm new to trying to do this um i'm i've been working in a in a gym for the last 10 years um and i'm trying to to diversify my skill set and i'd be interested to hear from others um how they um acquired their first five clients um if they're willing to share that would be really helpful to me yeah for sure uh Coaches, what do you got for Coach Lily? Also, if you have fewer than five clients, feel free to share any numbers one through client number that you're currently at. Okay. So Go for it, Anna. Thank you. Um, I work with a technology that helps a lot of people with different kinds of ailments and things. And so typically what, what attracts people to me is the, the fact that I've overcome something that they are battling or struggling with. So like, for instance, I had 25 years of bladder disease, which is theoretically uncurable and I'm all better. And so when one client heard that, she thought, oh my gosh, how is that? That's not possible because that's, she's a nurse and that's what she had been told. So I think being forthcoming with our own challenges can be helpful, particularly those that we've largely or maybe even fully overcome. And that way people also know when I meet clients, when I teach in person, when I teach Pilates or something, um, a lot of times they'll come in and they'll say, oh, well, I have this and I have that. And, and it's so comforting to them when I say, I understand, I, I have that as well. And this is what's possible. This is what's become possible for me based on the way I work. And so I know how to be very careful around it. Awesome. Thank you for sharing, Anna. Mm -hmm. Any other coaches got feedback for Coach Lily? Go for it, Leah. Um, so another one, I mean, you're saying that you're in the in a gym um, setting, but another one is just having that conversation with people. Um, you got to sell yourself, but then also do it in a conversation. Um, that's how I have actually get a lot of my clients. Um, this last one I got just randomly from just handing my business card just to give um, her son, my phone number, because <laughs> they were friends, like the, the boys were playing together. Um, so a lot of it is just having conversations with people, um, as you're talking to them, um, and just naturally going into that conversation of asking what they're doing for their nutrition. Um, that's how really I've got a lot of mine. Um, and then letting them know what I've been doing too, because a lot of people sometimes will ask. Um, and it's hard because there's so much misinformation out there. Um, and sometimes 
that's when I step in and just start having that conversation of um, the social media stuff that we have to deal with as coaches, which, um, you know, there's pros and cons to it, but I, I started using it as the pro of, cause I would just get so frustrated with it. I'm like, oh my gosh, it's ridiculous. But at the same time, it's important for us to see what's happening because these are our clients that are trying to follow some of these crazy trends um, and misinformation that is going on out there. Um, so I've tried to reverse those things have those conversations with those people when they start talking about it. But the biggest thing is you have, you have to be initiating those conversations. Um, Cause if you're just sitting doing nothing, no, like no one's going to find you. Um, so you really have to put out kind of like, Anna was saying, you, you have to be able to be forthcoming with things that you've gone through. Um, but then also you have to be a voice too, and just talk about nutrition sell yourself. Um, cause like I said, if you're sitting, you're not going to get any clients. That was a very valid point. Thank you for sharing Leah. Anyone else? Uh, Lily, I'll share my first five and my last five. So first five were all from people that I had already worked for, with in a gym. So I was like yourself working in person, personal trainer. Uh, my clients, the first five clients that I worked with, with using pro coach or like selling nutrition specific uh, programming were people that I had already been training for at least, I think the lowest was like, no one was under six months. Most of them were between one and two years. So there were people who already knew and liked me and were regular clients. And they likely would have stayed clients for long term if I didn't leave that gym. Uh, and I initially pitched it as, hey, we're having kind of conversations casually about nutrition. If you want to advance on those practices, it likely makes sense that we formalize this process a little bit. I have this thing that I think you'd be interested in. And I can now have those conversations with you outside of the gym. Is that something you're interested in? And I pitched it as it's essentially the same cost as one additional personal training session per month. What are your thoughts? These were people who typically were training with me two to three times per week. So they were going from, it would be the same as going from eight sessions per month to nine or 12 sessions per month to 13. So not a huge jump percentage wise, uh, even though the cost is like around a hundred bucks. So it was something uh, that was kind of an easy sell in that format. Uh, the last five people I've got, two were people who have been following me on social media for a long time. One was uh, we worked together at a grocery store when we were teenagers, so about 20-ish years ago. Uh, and the other person was someone who I don't, I actually didn't ask them They'd been following me for a long time and just like commenting on my, my content and stuff like that. And we just developed a conversation back and forth and they said, Hey, I'm looking to start working on some things. Are you available? Uh, the other three people, two of them were referred by a physiotherapist and one of them was referred by a doctor. And those are people who I've had in my referral network for a long time. And they will send me typically between one to two clients every two to three months between uh, each of them. So it's a pretty strong referral network, or at least I would call it a strong referral network. Uh, and yeah, that is the majority. I think that's a pretty uh, fair kind of assessment of how the majority of clients find me these days. It is some form of uh, social media, they found me there, or referrals from people within oh, who I have a professional working relationship with. Lily, hopefully that gives you some feedback in terms of uh, where some fellow coaches have started.
Uh, I'm just hopping into the chat box real quick. Uh, and Preston says, Preston is thinking of signing up for the trial pro coach offer. They earned their PN level one back on August of last year. And since then, we've been working a Facebook page to create, uh, have on the side. I've been getting around to learning about type form and I feel confident. With pro coach, does the trial offer trial offer clients or give? I'm gonna assume give you clients. So uh, correct me if I'm wrong here, Preston, or if you're that doc got cut off. Uh, no, pro coach does not generate a way for you to, or does not give you clients to work with. Client generation is entirely up to the coach. But uh, like we shared earlier in this call. There are tools in ProCoach to help you generate clients, including the done for you sales page. And there's also some done for you social media uh, packages that are included in ProCoach as well in the learning center. But a more up to date version of that would be the uh, social media and newsletter secrets of success package that PN put together about a year ago. Can you say that title again, please? Uh, the uh, the the program that we offered. So if you look, if you log into your PN dashboard and scroll down under the tab that says collections, there is a program that PN put together uh, called, I never get this name right, but a paraphrased version of it at least is Social Media and Newsletter Secrets to Success. It's a really long title. I think we could have workshopped it a little bit more, but it has a whole bunch of modules that are really useful for creating compelling social media content and compelling stories in general. Uh, everyone on this call, if you're on this call, you have access to it. It's not a paid, uh, it's not a paid program. Every PN, everyone who signs up for PN has access to it. So feel free to take a look at it there. Um, are you or John still doing the quiet meetings? Uh, the, oh, the study groups uh, meetings? No, we're not doing those anymore. Okay. But I will let Kate know that at least one person has inquired about them. And I assume because you enjoyed them. Oh, yeah, very much. It was great. Uh, cool. Now I'm trying to think, what were the, I'll share what the two questions that I have or had in my back pocket were for this week. And I'm going to tell you one of them just because I hope that the other one will pop back in my head, but we can open them up next week. Cause I think they're a little bit deeper conversations. So one of the questions I had for folks here, uh, came to me as I was getting absolutely pummeled by waves this morning uh, i took my two younger cousins for their surf, first surf lesson and then i uh, managed to show them everything not to do while surfing and this is not a common occurrence for me but part of my the way that i designed my life or that i've intentionally been designing my life for like the last several years to get to this point was i wanted to part of building my coaching business was that I wanted to be able to do a job that I can do from anywhere. Uh, when I started having this thought, it was actually John Goodman who kind of prompted me to have this thought. I noticed how he was taking his coaching business and encouraging other coaches to go online. And I thought, hey, it would be really nice if I can continue to provide my services for clients while I'm on vacation. Or uh, if I decide to leave the gym at any point, which I had no intention of doing at that point, but then life continued to happen and evolve. And now my business is entirely online. Uh, so today I got to do a cool thing, which was take my little cousins surfing. And I wanted to know from coaches who are here, if you were here, especially if you're at the kind of onset of your coaching career, are these things that you think about? And not specifically travel or anything like that, but are you designing your coaching business in a way that it meets your current and future needs? And is that something that you think about as you're going through the coaching process? So 
not a conversation that we need to to open up for today, but it is one that the next time I get to be in the driver's seat of this conversation again, uh, I hope that we do get to dive into. And it would be great to know how coaches are uh, at the onset of their coaching business or at the current juncture that you're at. How are you changing your life in a way or using your coaching business to kind of be an engine that changes your life in a better sense as well. We talk about this stuff with clients as well, like all the time. How does my service or how does interacting with my coaching business help to benefit your life? I'm curious to know, does that reflect back on us as coaches? Are we using the business that we're generating, that we're creating, that we're building to also enhance our own lives? And it could be just like, hey, I'm looking to make an extra few dollars per month and that's what I want for my business. And if it does that, that brings me a great deal of joy. That is incredibly valid. If it's like me and you want to have a business that allows you to kind of travel and be more flexible, how are you doing that? Uh, and then if you have a bit or aspirations beyond that, curious to know those as well. And for the life of me, I cannot. Oh, Leah, go for it. Well, I'll share. Um, so for me, it was, uh, I homeschool, I have four kiddos and I homeschool all of them. Um, and I was sitting one day and I was like, you know what, with me homeschooling, I could totally be doing my coaching online. Um, so that's when I started coaching online, but it is just with the flexibility of homeschooling and the flexibility of my job, um, we live in Hawaii, so we get to go to the beaches on days. And then I come, you know, I do part of my clients in the morning. We go to the beach. I come back. I do the rest of my clients. Um, and then we have a horse share, too. So we have a horse that we go up and ride. So it's just like flexibility for my family, um, which I guess somebody had shared on, on Facebook, you know, like things that we we didn't anticipate in being in a coach. Um, and originally I had said, you know, the, just the amount of reward um, and how rewarding my job is. But now that you mentioned this, it just brings it to that next level of like really how rewarding this job is, not just for my clients, but for me um, to be able to have that flexibility for my family. Um, and it's not hurting my business. Um, and being able to find, you know, figure that out when I, while I'm younger, I think is also really important because I get to spend more time with my family. So I get to stay at home. My husband works, but even for him, he's only working until about five o'clock in the evening. So he's home. So just being able to have family balance, I think is really just been amazing and something that um, just naturally happened, kind of like when we talk about how our niches of clients, right? And we have this expectation in our head, but then what really unfolds? Um, and I feel like that's kind of what's happened for me is not having so many. I still have face-to-face -face clients because I really enjoy that, but I don't have as many. Um, mm -hmm. So it's just, and that wasn't my it, total plan. My plan was to have everybody face-to-face. Um, but now I see the joys of being able to have that balance and I'm in control of that balance. That is awesome. Thank you for sharing that, Leah. Yeah. Anna, close this out for today. Thank you. Um, what I noticed is that when I was working in person, I was often driving 20 to 30 minutes, depending upon traffic to get somewhere and then, you know, get in through the gate. And then another, you know, my return trip. And oftentimes people wouldn't even show up. But I also met some really amazing people. But what I learned was that getting ready to go out and particularly in the heat of the summer here, it was taking so much time that it was holding me back from being able to serve more people. And so for me, being online is just so much more economical energetically for me and practically and um, I love it. I, I also really do miss um, having some in-person clients, but I have a few people here and there, you know, people who um, I used to coach in Pilates who asked me to come to their home. So like you, um, who was that, Leah? 
I, I like to keep just a couple few really special people who I really want to want to spend that time with one on one. And and that feeds me there. That is awesome. Thank you for sharing, Hanna. Cool. You're welcome. That feels like a good place to wrap up for today. Uh, as always, thank you all for being here. Thank you for contributing your awesome questions uh, and sharing feedback with your fellow coaches. And I hope to catch you at the next one. Cheers, gang. Cheers. Thank you.